Okay, gang. Now that we've kind of handled all those nasty, big, complex reactions that involved that were involved with the alpha carbons, let's move on to something a little bit more tame. Something I know you're going to probably think like, "Wow, this is so easy compared to all that crap we were just doing." I'm talking about let's look at the physical properties, the structure, and reactions with carboxylic acids, right? We've worked with carboxylic acids before. We've seen them before. So it's kind of a familiar face if you kind of want to think about it like that. Okay, so I'm just going to draw you guys just a generic carboxylic acid. So let's just look at this two carbon carboxylic acid. Sure, he'll look familiar. This is acetic acid, right? We've seen him a bunch of times. Even you probably have heard this name in one of your gen chem, gen chem classes before. Okay, so Right, carboxylic acids, it's characterized by this carbon being a part of a double bonded oxygen, or double bonded with an oxygen right here, a carbonyl, and this OH at the end. Right, so carboxylic acids, they have to be terminal, right? Terminal meaning they have to be at the end of a chain. You can't have a carboxylic acid somewhere in the middle of some type of carbon chain. So let's just kind of see what we can do here. So obviously, they're acids, right? This hydrogen right here, it's acidic, right? It's a proton that can be donated as H+. In addition, we know that it's kind of a relatively good acid because if we were to lose this hydrogen, right, if I kind of just erase him and I throw an electron pair right there, this oxygen would have a negative charge, right? So this would be the conjugate base of acetic acid. This would be acetate. Now, remember one of our stabilizing forces with conjugate bases that come from acids is resonance, right? And we can definitely draw some resonance here. So let me swing these electrons down. I'll form a double bond right here. But when I do that, I'm going to break the octet rule, right? So I need to kind of bounce a bond somewhere. Otherwise, this carbon would have one, two, three, four, five bonds. So let me kick this electron pair up onto that oxygen right there. So you can see, if I draw the result of that, that there's resonance apparent in uh, carboxylic acids, particularly when you lose that hydrogen on the, o the OH, that hydrogen on the OH. Okay, so actually let me, so this is in the case where you donate H+. So let me erase this. So we can see that they're good acids because the conjugate base is stabilized by resonance, right? That charge is delocalized. Let me redraw this guy. But we can also draw resonance when we don't lose that H, right? So let me kind of just draw my electrons on the ox oxygens, right? So let's see what happens when we draw resonance. Let me swing these electrons down, because we can still do that. And that means I'm going to have to pick up this double bond, otherwise I will break the octet rule. I'll draw my double-headed arrows for resonance, and here's the result. This oxygen now has three lone pairs and a negative charge. There's a double bond here, and we have the hydrogen up there. So this oxygen now has a positive charge, right? So you can see through our resonance, right, there's almost a partial positive charge up on this oxygen and a partial, or sorry, partial negative charge up there, partial positive charge down there. So sometimes you might see a question on a test or a worksheet, like on one of my worksheets. If you're given, you know, acetic acid or some type of carboxylic acid, which oxygen would be protonated in the presence of a stronger acid like HCl, right? If there's some strong presence of H+, which one of these guys would grab H+. And the answer would be the oxygen in the carbonyl, right? Because through the resonance, we see he has a partial negative charge in the oxygen, right? So sometimes you might see that. Okay, so this video is meant to just kind of give you an intro, kind of a refresher of the structure of carboxylic acids, and remind you of the resonance you can draw. But what I really kind of want to finish this up with is go over boiling points and do a little bit of um, oxidation reduction kind of a, like a refresher of that as well. Because I know we tackled that in OCHEM 1, it comes back in OCHEM 2. So let me erase this and then we'll go over boiling point. Okay gang, so let's look at boiling points uh, now considering carboxylic acids. So remember, when we're talking about boiling points, we're looking to rank things from uh, compounds with really weak intermole intermolecular forces to really strong intermolecular forces, right? So we're looking at things like how many carbons are in the molecule, aka bond and dispersion forces, and other things like polarity, right? Is there an electronegative uh, atom in the molecule causing like a little bit of a partial negative, partial positive side of the molecule, and of course hydrogen bonding. Can something hydrogen bond? So let's look at these four 
compounds right here. And we're going to rank these guys 1 to 4, 1 to the lowest boiling point, 4 to the highest. Okay? So, right off the bat, I'm going to say that this, so everyone has two carbons, two carbons, two carbons, two carbons, right? And I'm going to say that, you know, ethane is just very bland. He only has London dispersion forces. I'm going to give him a four. He ha or sorry, one, 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 one. One is the lowest boiling point. That's all he's got going for him, right? So now let's keep moving on. So I see that in ethanol and in this uh, acetic acid, right? I see an electronegative atom bonded to hydrogen, an electronegative atom bonded to hydrogen. These two can hydrogen bond. It may look a little deceiving, but this two carbon aldehyde here, there is no electronegative atom directly attached to the hydrogen. So he can't hydrogen bond, right? So these guys can, he can't. I'm gonna give him a two, because all he has is a little bit of a, you know, of a dipole polarity thing going for him, no hydrogen bonding. Now you can see that there's hydrogen bonding here, right? This H has a big delta plus. This oxygen, right, he can use a lone pair so this guy, this H can form a hydrogen bond. This oxygen can have a hydrogen bond at this lone pair, a hydrogen bond at this lone pair. This oxygen right here, he can have a hydrogen bond with this lone pair and with this lone pair, right? If uh, another hydrogen from a different carboxylic acid came in to meet up with him, right? In ethanol over here, right, there are fewer spots to hydrogen bond, right? There's only this one hydrogen, lone pair, lone pair. There's Hydrogen, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. So he has more, or he has more hydrogen bonding ability. So ethanol gets a three, carboxylic acid gets the four. So that's how to do a quick boiling point ranking. You might have to do that. I know I'm going to make you guys do it. Just to make sure you can handle it if it comes your way. Okay, I'm going to erase this, and then we're going to do a little review of oxidation and reduction, and we'll call it quits for this video. Okay, gang. So let's first kind of go through a little bit of a refresher on oxidation, right? So let's just say I have this, you know, two carbon alcohol, good old ethanol. We can always count on ethanol for, uh, to be there for us. Right, so remember, to literally oxidize something in the world of organic chemistry means make it have more bonds to oxygen, right? Makes sense. So remember, there's two different types of reactions we can do here. So I'm gonna draw an arrow going this way, and I'm gonna draw another arrow kind of going down this way to show two products. Remember, we can oxidize this OH to a carboxylic acid, throw back to OCHEM1, if we use Na2Cr2O7, sodium dichromate, as well as H2SO4. Right? Some people might, in their classes, see this as the Jones reagent. You would see this product, right? If you use Na2Cr2O7, sodium dichromate, and H2SO4, you will take your alcohol, or whatever you have, all the way to a carboxylic acid. It's full oxidation, right? On the other hand, what if we just wanted to stop at an aldehyde, right? We didn't want to go all the way to the carboxylic acid. Well, remember, if you throw in some PCC, that will just take you to the aldehyde, and you'll stop, right? You don't go all the way to the carboxylic acid, right? So that's oxidation. Let me do a little bit of an erasing job here. So what about reduction? Remember, we have two reagents for that. So let me kind of, uh, I'll just go with an aldehyde first, and then we'll see how this links to carboxylic acids. So remember, again, I'm going to draw two arrows down like this. The first thing we can do, right, is NaBH4 and ethanol. If we use those set of reagents, right, this is kind of our source of H minus. This will take an aldehyde back down to the alcohol, right? It's a reduction, which is the opposite of oxidation, which means less bonds to oxygen for your carbon attached to oxygen. On the other hand, remember, we can use a stronger, more vigorous, more violent reducing agent. And this is a first step of, remember, lithium aluminum hydride, or if you see the abbreviation, some organic slang. You wanna, my boys out there, you wanna impress the honeys, you throw in some LAH, with a second step of H3O plus or just H plus, right? But it has to be a first step of this and a second step of acid. That'll also get the job done, right? Okay, however, right, this is carboxylic acids. So what's the catch? So let's just say I make this into not a two carbon aldehyde, 
but a two carbon carboxylic acid. Let's kind of erase this for the big reveal. The catch is this reagent isn't strong enough to reduce a carboxylic acid. So there's actually nothing that goes on here. On the other hand, lithium aluminum hydride in the second step of acid, it's very violent, it's very strong, very reactive. This can actually reduce a carboxylic acid to your alcohol. So just remember that. Okay, gang. So we talked about a lot of review today in this video. So really there's not a whole bunch of mind bending stuff going on here. I think you're going to find this stuff kind of interesting, sort of repetitive in the way that the mechanisms in the beginning of carbonyls were, where it's a lot of the same, but uh, I think you're going to like it. So see you in the next video.